Welcome back everybody. In this video we are going to be working on authorization. We're going to be working on getting authorization from E-Trade to work with their API. We are going to be using another project's code. So I did make a reference here. Uh, GitHub.com slash the idealist slash node dash E-Trade dash API. You can go ahead and check that out. That code is for version zero. And what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is we are going to update that code so we can communicate with E-Trade's version one API. All right, at this time, go ahead and create a file called test-keys.js. And then in this file, we're going to import the consumer key and then consumer secret. Go ahead and create the three variables provided on the screen. The first one is E-Trade. We're going to set that to the library. Next is called configuration. This is where we're going to set the sandbox mode, consumer key, consumer secret, and verbose logging. And then the last variable we're going to set is ET. And that's going to be equal to our configuration that we have set up. Next, we're going to create a folder called lib. This is going to be our library for our application. In that folder, create a file called etrade.js. And then you're going to create four variables. One's called crypto. Next is uh, OAuth underscore sign. And then we're going to create query string. And then request is going to be our final variable. And what we're doing here is we're creating these variables and we're going to set them to equal to the each module. And then the next step is going to install each four modules. So you're going to have to open up command line and make sure you're in the project folder eTrades directory and then go ahead and initiate these four commands. And what that's going to do is that's going to install the four modules for your application. So we're going to finish up creating the E-Trade library. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a module dot exports equal exports equal function. And then we're going to pass through the options. And remember, the options are going to be our E-Trade configuration we made in the, the test-keys.js file. So the first step is we're going to see and make sure that all the arguments in the configuration that we're passing through for the options are set and it's not going to throw any errors. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a variable for the configuration. And in, in this section, we're going to set the address that we're going to make the HTTP request to the E-Trades API. So in the for the OAuth um, host it's going to be API sb.etrade.com. That's going to be the the host we're going that we're going to make requests for the OAuth. And then we're going to authorize our app at us.etrade.com. And then the path is going to be slash e slash t 
slash ATWS slash authorize. And then the login is going to be slash home. So then when you go down to the sandbox, this is going to be the host address for the sandbox environment. And that's going to be API sb dot com slash v1 and of course once you're you're comfortable enough you can actually um, make a production uh, for production uh, configuration and that's where you would set that so you could would set the production um, host in this uh, this area. So continuing with this function, we're going to initialize this dot configuration. And then we're going to set it equal to the configuration dot base. And then we're going to make an if statement. And then we're going to use the sandbox and then get all the attributes from the configuration dot sandbox. And then we're going to set the configuration attributes and equal it to the configuration dot sandbox attributes. And then from there, we're going to pull out the configuration key, configuration secret, and then set the authorization equal to false. And then we're also we're going to set the crypto OAuth sign, query string, and then query request. Those four we already made the node um, modules for that. And we already installed that for our Node.js application. So moving on from that export function, next we're going to create a variable modules. And we're going to set that equal to a couple of files that we're going to need to require from the library folder. So after we're done with this etrade.js file, we're going to be creating a authorization.js file and an accounts.js file. The for statement below is going to gather these two files together and make it into an ar array list. So we can later on, we can pull the, the module um, files and their functions. This next uh, function that we're going to be creating, the underscore get request option, it's going to be important. We're going to pass through the method. In this case, we're going to be using get methods. And then the timestamp, the module, the action, and then the use, use J, JSON, which for most cases, we're going to set that to true. And then, as you can see, we're going to return the, the host name, the path, we're going to tell it to use JSON. The method, like I said before, is going to be get. And then here we're going to use the use these the QS to for the query string. And then we're going to set the consumer key, the OAuth nonce, which is going to generate the timestamp for us. The OAuth signature method which we are going to be using HMAC-SHA1. And then the timestamp, we're going to set that with this method. And then we're going to use OAuth version one. And then we're going to leave an option here for headers. And later on, we will use another function to initialize the header. So next you're going to create a 
function called underscore generate nonce four. And then you're, when you call this uh, function, you're going to pass through a timestamp. And then that timestamp is going to be ran through to through all these equations um, to set the OAuth um, signature. Because in the OAuth signature, you're going to require a timestamp. And then you're going to use that timestamp for when your token expires. We're going to create another function called underscore parse body. And for this function, we're going to pass through two variables. The first variable is content type. The second is the message body. And then we're going to create a variable called content types. And what we're going to do is we're going to first pass the message body to, through to make sure that it is URL encoded. And then we're going to make sure that it's using JSON. And then the last thing is we're going to make sure that the it's using HTML. So we're going to finish off the function underscore parse body by making sure that at the end of this that the content types equals a function. And if it doesn't, then and you use the wrong, let's say you use XML instead of JSON, it's going to say that it's it doesn't recognize the content type, and then it's going to throw an error. So when sending re requests to E-Trade, um, especially when you're sending get requests to E-Trade, Sometimes you're going to pass through parameters. In this tutorial, we are not going to discuss parameters that much. So I'm going to quickly explain the next few slides. So this function underscore build params descriptor. This is where you're going to start building your, your parameters and then validating them. You can use these four functions right here to pass through um, values from parameters that you're going to be using to make sure that they are the correct data type. Here's a couple more functions that you're going to use to validate the data that you're passing through for your parameters. So the next function is going to be underscore get authorization header for. This is going to be an important uh, function because we're going to use this function anytime that we are making a request to E-Trade. So when we pass through the request options, we're going to use that to set um, the variables that we're going to use to create the OAuth signature. Um, and then with the OAuth signature, we're going to use that to create a return. And we're going to have to format this return in a certain way so it's accepted by E-Trade. So this is a standard OAuth header that we're going to pass through. Um, if you are not familiar with OAuth headers, um, you can go to um, the OAuth uh, website and look up uh, OAuth uh, um, version one because each raid uses OAuth version one as a standard for making requests to them. 
and in the header you're going to have to set the OAuth realm, the version, the consumer key, token, timestamps, nonce, signature method, and then finally you're going to pass through the signature to them. So this is going to be the underscore run function. We're going to pass through the action descriptor, the params, the success callback, and the error callback. First, we're going to write a if statement to make sure the success callback is a function. If it's not, we're going to return an error. Next, we are going to make sure we are authorized so that we can actually make the request to E-Trade. And then for the request option, we are going to use the action descriptor to assign what the method is, the module, the action, and then the use JSON. Next, we are going to use the request option to assign the OAuth token. We're going to get the configuration for the OAuth access token. So in this tutorial, like I said, the only method we will be using is the, the get method. So what we're doing here is we're finding out, are we using any parameters? If we are, we're going to set those parameters in our request option variable. And then once we have that all set, we are going to um, assign the authorization header. And then we're going to use the get authorization header for that. So finally, we are going to make the get request. First, we are going to stringify our request options that we made. Then we're going to use verbose logging to actually make the request. So we're using this dot request to make sure that our get request is successful and then that we did not receive any errors while making the get request. So if we did not receive any errors while making the request, we're finally going to make a variable called response. And what we're going to do is, is parse the message body. And then we're going to use the success callback and we're going to assign that to the response that we get from E-Trade. 